place where I was. Welcome to the Holistic Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Keisha Blair, wife, mother of three, author of Holistic Wealth, and founder of the Institute on Holistic Wealth. The show will showcase various experts in the key pillars of holistic wealth. Each week, we deliver the best information on how to become holistically wealthy and live your best life. Today, we have a very, very special guest with us. We have JJ. And JJ is an international speaker and has been exciting people with his message for the last 15 years in over 30 countries. In 2009, he leveraged the social media platform, YouTube, to grow his brand to 57 million views online and in the entertainment industry. Leaving his tricks behind, he leveraged his mastery in PR and personal branding to start an advertising agency called Aces of Spades, which helps people grow their personal brand so they can become number one in their space. JJ, welcome to the show. It's amazing having you here. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Let's give your guests some energy, some enthusiasm, some excitement. Let's engage with them, educate them, and give them an experience. How's that for the ease? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's amazing because it's the start of the year, and that's exactly what people need. And so, JJ, I've been following along on Instagram and that's JJ Live at JJ Live for all of you who want to know so you can follow along. J A Y J A Y Lives. J A Y J A Y Lives. So just so we're clear. Yes, absolutely. And you have a story there. It's an inspirational story that really resonated with me. And I know it will resonate with our audience. And it's the story of, you know, you coming to America and how that got started for you. And you mentioned in that post that you needed the funds to get that visa to come to America and to start your entrepreneurial journey. And I'll just let you go through it for our guests listening in because I I found it really, really inspirational, motivational. And so can you tell us about that journey, how it got started and leading up to now? I was sitting on my parents' couch in 2016 and I had to, I was living in Asia and I I was traveling and speaking and building my brand, but I really needed to get to America. Because America is really the land of opportunity, in my opinion. You know, I, there's a lot, you can do anything you want coming here, right? No one's going to stop you. And from a country that was English speaking, I was like, I need to be in a place where I have full power, and full accessibility. So getting to this country is not hard when you want to work legally, right? You know, you can come here and travel, but if you want to do what I want to do, you need to have the full permission. And the way to do that is get a visa. And I went for the hardest visa. It's called the O1A. So it's called a special ability visa. You need to prove to the government that you are a special ability. Why do we need you? Why can't we find another version of you in America? So the documentation wasn't hard. The signatures weren't hard. The hardest thing was actually finding the five figures of money to pay my lawyer and have extras over in my bank account to show to the government that I'm a fit and I can even get here. And that was hard because at the time my parents didn't have any money. I didn't have any money. And it wasn't like I had just like a rich brother, but like, Hey, I need to borrow, you know, a lot of money to get here. So I had to do something I've never had to do before and take a risk and ask someone for money. And I don't know if anyone's ever had to ask other people for money, not like your parents. That is extremely challenging. That's like, it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And I still think today, asking people for money is extremely challenging because as a male, it just is like complete ego burn. Like you, you don't have, you have nothing. Like you've got your time. Like if you said to someone, hey, can I borrow an hour of your time? Sure. But if I'm like, hey, can I borrow $10,000 or $1,000? People are like, mm, I don't know, man. You know? Yeah. So I had to take the risk and count to three and... I remember being on WhatsApp and I started going, I was going to text people. I'm like, no. And I also didn't want to call people. I wanted people, I wanted it to ponder, letting people to sit in it. So I made them a voice memo on WhatsApp and I sent it to some people. And it was, once I did it, I was happy. But after it was challenging because the people that I thought would give me the money were not my closest friends, ironically. That was hard. That was, that hurt. The people I went to first were the people I know that, you know, 12,000 wasn't that much money. You know, but the person that gave me the money was the person that wasn't my closest friend, ironically, right? So I eventually got the money and 
I got to the country, but doing that was extremely challenging and it really put my character and really got me in a place where I wasn't happy. But I got here and I'm here. So Absolutely. And it's a fabulous story and I'm sure it will resonate with our audience. And so you built like you built a highly successful business afterwards. You built a seven figure business, I think. How did you, can you tell us the story of how you did that? Speaking of corporations, traveling around in America, I, I came to America to live in LA and I was trying to do TV hosting. That's what I used to do in Asia. I was like, let me come to LA to make it. You know, that's what you do. You come to the entertainment capital city of the world. But obviously the entertainment business is the big cray cray, right? It's, it's more lows than highs and it's very, it's an illusion. When you live in LA, you see the illusion. When you're out of LA, you don't see it because you, you know, LA wants to put on a facade. So while I was doing that, I was speaking and building my career speaking. And then in 2020, right, when the world stood still, I couldn't do live events anymore. I couldn't speak. And, but I wasn't really happy. I wasn't really, I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't actually in the right lane. I thought I was because I thought I have to work hard and push and deal with the rejection and sacrifice in this space. But it's funny, isn't it? When you immediately, and I'm sure guests listening would understand this, when, when the pandemic happened, more people actually was thinking, did anyone ever say to you it was the best thing that ever happened to me? So many people were like, while it's hard for a lot of people, it was more of a, a blossoming time for a lot of people because they had to stop something they'd done their whole life and really go back to themselves and go, what do I really stand for? What do I really care about? What actually makes me come alive? Like, this is a chance where I can start again, right? And the whole world is stood still and it like, gives you a time to think, to actually breathe. So when that happened, I actually, when I couldn't do live events anymore, and it was sort of like, I immediately turned my business into helping people grow a personal brand. That's what I've done for so many years. But I didn't voice it like that. I loved helping people just get to the next level, like helping people where are they at, how do they get to the next level? But now with the industry that I know so much about media and show business and TV and lights and fame. How can we take that and put that to a normal person or someone that's not in a sexy or cool or, you know, industry that you would think you would need that. And immediately boom, it just shot up. It was like, I was in the right lane. So skip ahead, you know, a year and a half, two years. It's, you know, we're in over 10 countries. We work with hundreds of people whether it's a small step or a large step, we're helping people elevate themselves today. So it's, it's super. No, that's amazing. And so, yeah, we're talking personal branding for 2022. And you grew your YouTube channel immensely to 57 million views. You have 1 million followers on Instagram. You're doing amazingly well. And I know there's so many people, as you said, they've taken the time during the pandemic to kind of refocus, realign, reconsider what they're about. You know, we heard about the great resignation waves. There are tons of people, millions of people out there who are rebranding and they're thinking about, you know, recasting themselves in a new and better light. So I'd love to hear from you some tips and tactics for how they can do that in 2022, given all we've been through with the pandemic and given that people are, as you said, they're recasting themselves. They want to come out of this better than they did before. They have the time to think about what they want. How can they do personal branding in a way to get themselves out there in a meaningful way to connect with an audience in an authentic, vulnerable way? You know, just like how you do on your Instagram with your stories and, and the inspiration, how can they do that? Well, the first thing, it starts with them. What is a personal brand? It's them personal. A brand is who they are. You know, I would, the first thing I would get people out of the mindset of like, don't get too caught up on the things that don't matter. The logo, the website, I got to get the whole vision, like just start. And the way to start is start using, using your, your iPhone and start putting out content because content's free. It does, you don't need a coach to do it. You don't need a major strategy. You just need to take action and press a button and start talking. And I always tell people the easiest way to, to get your message out, because a lot of people don't know their message. They're still trying to figure out, what do I really care for? When the pandemic happened, I didn't think I'm going to help entrepreneurs or people that have sold companies help them build their personal brand. It took time to, to I call it, dance into that role, right? Because you've got to find out what you like and what you don't like. Who do you like to serve? Who do you not like to serve? Do I want to do women, men, young kids, old people? Like, you don't know. So the way to start is I would start by putting out content, 
right? I would start by like doing a live every day. I tell people do an Instagram live for 30 days. You'll know very quickly who you want to help, what you like, because it helps you effectively communicate your message and story. And you don't need to do any editing. You don't need to do any kind of frills and whistles. You just literally hop up your phone up, press a button and just go, you know what? I'm here. I want to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing for the new year. People want to be a part of your story and your journey. That's huge. Like if you can bring people along your journey, they feel like they're part of your story. And the moment that you ask them to do something, whether it's buy from you, whether it's join something, click them like, yeah, of course, I've known her. Of course, I'll do that. I'll support her. Absolutely. And, you know, I think in one of your other posts, you talk about the power of being authentic, the power of showing up as yourself and being vulnerable too. And I wanted to ask you about that because I, that really resonated with me as well, just in terms of my journey and having a viral article and writing an article that was so vulnerable after my husband died. And so I just wanted to get from you how people can feel comfortable you know, and you had another post on introverts, which was very interesting. How can people feel comfortable putting themselves out there in a vulnerable way, especially it can be intimidating for some people. So what advice would you have for those people who are like, yeah, I want to connect with my audience. I really want them to walk this journey with me, but it's so hard sometimes to show the inner workings of my thoughts and my life and just those vulnerable stories. Yeah, well, the first step is don't think you have to share your deepest, darkest secrets as your first post. I think, feel like sometimes, and this is totally understanding because revealing on the internet is quite new, right? Like for a long time, you know, and it's still today, a lot of people have got their arms folded. They work in a tall rise building. They work behind a, behind a suit jacket. They don't want to reveal. No, 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 no. I need to keep a straight face. No one's allowed to see my emotion. And now we're realizing people can start to share a little bit more. But that doesn't mean you need to give all your biggest, deepest, darkest secrets or what's something that's painful in your life. Maybe share a little bit. Maybe share a time, for example, let's say someone's listening there a realtor. Have you ever done a bad deal or, or be, had a bad business partner or something's bad happened to you in real estate? Share that story. You don't need to share, share maybe the person screwed you over for a lot of money. Maybe like, hey, there was a time in my life where I met someone that didn't do me very well. And what I learned is bum, 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 bum. See that? And it could be a photo of you maybe looking sad and you have a caption. Let's say that you were really, really overweight and you lost weight right? Put a photo up of you. Maybe you don't have to show your whole body. Maybe it was just a photo of you not looking too good on a Saturday. And there's a photo of you in a brand new dress and you can do the comparison. Hey, you know what? For a long time, I struggled with my weight. I struggled with this. Pain and pleasure is a great way, like two photos to find. Go like everyone listening right now, find a photo of you that you remember it hurt, the time that it hurt a photo. You'll find it. Right, it's easy to find a hurtful photo than a pleasure photo, actually. But find a find a photo that's painful or that's somewhat of pain. Then find a pleasure photo. Could be you with the kids. Could be you with the husband. Could be you just like having a burger. Doesn't matter. The whole point of that is that you want to have a caption. What happened at that time, or what does that emotion make you feel? And then how do you relate that to your business? And then you can start to share. You'd be surprised when, when you start to share and reveal. People feel like, oh, wow, they're actually human. I can connect with them. 2022, JJ, you know, um, people are starting to think about, okay, should I, you know, zero in on one or two platforms? Where's a good place to start? There's so many social media platforms out there now. And, and we know, depending on your audience, whether it's millennials or Gen Z or it's baby boomers, how can people know where to start? Should they focus in on one or two? Should they try to have a presence on all of them? You know, how can they strategize so that they're using their time effectively and they're getting the maximum impact? Yeah, well, there, there are two ways to answer this. If you've got a team or you pay someone like me, you know, we can diversify the content, right? But at the end of the day, for most people, and I always give people this, stick on one or two platforms. I recommend Instagram, period. Like, it's just a great platform. 80% of businesses are using Instagram, to promote their business, to show up, you know? So Instagram's great. Facebook is still good depending on your audience. Like, but be careful. Here's one thing I'll tell you about TikTok or Snapchat. Be careful because yes, you'll get a lot of likes and views, but you can waste a lot of time 
doing that when really what is the why? That, why are you doing this? Now, if you're doing it for the likes and views, that's cool. But most people are doing it to build their business and they're trying to get customers and cash, right? So most of your clients, yeah, there are some people using TikTok, right? And you can run that, but I recommend using Clubhouse and Instagram. That's like fire for me at the moment, you know, because you've got Clubhouse is the audio program. It's like a virtual stage. You could speak, people can listen to you, share your message and story. You can run your own room and you can direct people into Instagram so they can see a visual idea of what you do, who you help, who you, what, how you, you're different, and they can understand you a little bit. And it's a great platform, Instagram, in my opinion, that you, there's a lot of things you can do with it, you know. When they come to your page, they can only see your page at one time. Facebook, it's messy. You can do stories. You can DM people. Like, it's just a good, solid platform that I'm, I'm yeah, a fan no, of. Yeah, for sure. It's an amazing platform to grow an audience. And so, JJ, just to get back to the business side of it and how social media can actually help a business grow. And I know you've helped tons of clients over the years to start from scratch, to build up their personal branding. Is there any, you know, story or case in particular that you can think of that was highly successful that people might find some inspiration or motivation in? Yeah. So we had this one lady, you know, I, when I first got into this, especially with the personal branding title, I was like, first thing I want to do is I want to go help people that don't look like me, that are double my age and, and there are women. I want to like completely just like, I don't want people to go, yeah, well, it's easy for you because you're helping other people that look like you or they're young or, you know, all, all, everything that people can think of because I want to go help someone that's completely not like me to prove this stuff works for my own confidence. So we helped this lady, we helped this lady out and she wanted to be a speaker. And I think the biggest thing at the beginning, and this everyone can take this, and if you're taking notes, you want to take this one, write this one down. Every, you deserve to tell your story. Everyone has a story. I have a story and I need to share it. I feel like so many people stop them from putting themselves out there because they're telling themselves things like, I don't have a story. No one wants to listen to me. I'm just a lady from Minneapolis and I work at a bank. Well, hang on. How dare you? How dare you tell yourself that you don't have a story? Tell your story. You're telling me that you don't have any stories. You do. You just have to get someone like me to bring it out of you. So you work with this lady to bring out a story. And it, isn't it funny? Usually the people that say that have more stories than the people who are telling stories, right? Right. So we brought out all these stories. And then once you find the stories in, I think allow people that, hey, you can play with that. That's funny, right? If people need the validation. So we brought, we told her to bring out her story. And, you know, and then the second part was like, then we had to deal with the rejection part. This is number two, right? Before personal run, you got to get your mindset in check. So you have a story. Second thing. Write this one down. You're going to get rejected. I'm judging you. You're judging me right now. We're all judging everybody, right? So let's deal with that because like it's human, right? We're curious creatures. Oh, interesting. Why? What's the accent from? Why is this? Why is he wearing the pocket square? What kind of hair product does he use? Like you, you've got all these thoughts in your head, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. But I believe so many people stop themselves because of that. So after we told her that she has a story, after we told her, hey, people want to hear it, she pressed the button on her Instagram. I told her to do the 30 days. And it's interesting. Within the first three days, she was like, oh, my gosh, this one lady from school, you know, has been watching me. And she reached out to me. It's like, I've been watching your videos. And that was magic, right? So I realized it didn't matter how old the person was, what country they lived in, what sex, or if they're gay or they're straight, it didn't matter. It was really just that we had to help them with their mindset and show them what's possible. That's a huge part of it for people who have to get over those barriers that you mentioned. And it's all mindset for sure. And so, JJ, I've been talking a lot on this podcast about, you know, people embracing their own personal financial identities, because I think it's so important As you mentioned, like so many entrepreneurs get stuck on, oh, I need the the website with all the bells and whistles and I need all these types of things to get started before. And they put so many barriers there and they can get stuck. And I know you took the personal financial identities quiz. So I'm eager to hear not only your results, but your thoughts, you know, given your journey and, and your philosophy, your spending and 
investing philosophy and, and how you, you even advise your own clients. I'm eager to hear your results and your thoughts about that, you know, as people have been tuning in and have been learning from experts about their own personal financial identities and about how they use that and how they embrace that in their own lives. Well, I firstly, I want to congratulate you for talking about money. I think we need to speak more about money, right? I wish I was taught more about money, you know? Like it's such a taboo subject, but why? You know, it shouldn't be. Money's just, money's just currency to help us pay for things at this current time where, where this is the way currency is done, right? So it's a way that we give something for something else. But so many people get, they get so scared about it. And, and the one thing that, the one thing that's big for me, and this is good for me because money's talking about money's never been an issue for me. But what sometimes gets it makes a problem is that for me is that you've got to learn how to realize that it's I'm at the place where I'm supposed to be. So like I can tend to look at other people's lives, right? And value my worth on the cash that I have in my bank or where I'm at. So my problem isn't the, the money. Like I can talk about money. It's not an issue. Like if someone says they make $50,000 an hour, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. What do you do? Like, how does that work? I go curious rather than get defensive. You know, I don't know if you've ever, anyone's ever told, like when I used to do ma- being a magician, I remember saying to someone, so I was like, oh, how much do you get paid as a magician? I think that at that time it was like, I got $5,000 for a night. And they, they were like angry. They're like, it takes me all month to make that. And you make that in one night. Now I knew that anything I could tell them about, yeah, but it's taken me 15 years of experience. I'm entertaining a group of 500 people on stage, standing in public speaking, but they didn't hear that. And it realized to me, a lot of people haven't been educated about what's possible for them. And this is why it's great with what you're doing. Like, I think we need to have these hard conversations and, and be okay to go. It's okay. Like your worth isn't depending on $50,000 a year right? How can we make 50,000 a month? And that, to that people, it's like, oh my gosh, like that's, that would be, how, how, would we, how would you like to make another $10,000 a month in your pocket? But giving, I think, people the confidence and the, the education, like it's, it's the education element, you know? It's the education element. So back to your question, you know, I'm, it says I was a risk taker. I think if you asked me this a year ago, it wouldn't be like this, right? I was a little bit more, I wouldn't say frugal. I was a little bit more unsure, but Last year was probably my biggest year. I spent the most money I've ever on myself, ironically. So, you know, the most money I've ever made in my life was this year. And the most money I spent on myself was this year. Funny that, isn't it? So I really just invested all of my money and took the risk on me. And listen, there were like, I remember spending my first big coach was $25,000. Like the most I ever spent was like 5,000. That's a, like, that was a lot, right? And, and, and it wasn't even a guaranteed, like, it was like, okay, fingers crossed, you know, and, and I didn't get the return that I wanted, but that wasn't his fault. It wasn't exactly what I was meant to do, but I had to go through that to invest in myself, to understand, to make money, make those relationships, to invest more money. So yeah, that risk taking it, like, it took me a lot to do that at the time, you know? And I look back at those times, I'm like, well, I had to pay the other 12 and a half thousand in the three days. And there was like, I think there was no money in the account. And I remember I had to call people like, hey, what is that invoice going to be paid? Like trying to be cool, right? Hey, I'm just wondering, you know, because I'm like, I, if I didn't pay it, he wouldn't let me in. So, you know, and, and it was interesting. Like I thought I wouldn't get out of that problem. And then it's just, I realized it's all just, it's just a moment of time. So, Yeah. I know I'm going around in circles, but the, the thing with money and I try and advise people on to think abundantly, you know, and it's look, especially in my space too, I'm in PR and branding. That's usually not a very clear ROI. It's hard to sell. It's for people who get it, they get it. Like if you come to me and says, Jay, I've got the opportunity for you to get on a television show with these opportunities, I'm the easiest close because I know what it's going to do for me long-term, Right. But when you're speaking to a business owner and saying, listen, I want you to give me $20,000, it is the plan, and you can't give them a di- direct ROI, it- it's challenging. You know, it's not like a Facebook ad. So for me, when I advise my clients, advise the market, look at, I'm always advising them on, on the money they spend on themselves will pay off in a year 
or two years. And I think what you're doing is right as well, educating people about how to maybe use money, how to invest in themselves. Like, stop looking at things like, what is my ROI? Like, what's the ROI in your family? What's the ROI in your health? Like, you know, if I said to you, hey, give me $50, like, it's like, look at insurance. Like, what's the ROI? It's, 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 it's the, it's the long term, the long term. And I think so many people are like, I've got $5,000. I need to get the wins right now. It's like, you, sh- you should be thinking like, just invest it. What can you learn from this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's so, so important that we stop thinking about the ROI, as you said, and think long-term in terms of what it's going to do for your brand or your business. And, and like you said, during the last year, you invested more in yourself than any other time. And, and this was during a pandemic. This was during COVID. And, and so that makes a lot of sense. And I'm sure there are people thinking about whether it's going back to school, starting a business, investing in PR, as you mentioned, to get that business some publicity. Think about the long term, not necessarily what you're going to get back tomorrow, but think about the long term. And so, JJ, as we wrap up, any last words? of wisdom, any last words of advice for the audience? Yeah, look, I'm going to give you the three C's. It's a good one. So content, right? Plus conversation, right? Equals cash flow, which equals choices. So when you make content, get people to know your story, what you do, what you're about, what you stand for. Have conversation over the content. So talk to people about what you do more, Right. Doing that will give you cash, right? Because you're talking and you're showing them what's possible for their business and who they are. And then with the cash, you have choices. So keep that in mind, the four C's actually. You know, it's it, well, how can I be creating content? Because it's free. It doesn't cost you any money. And remember, it's, it's, it's long-term trust, long-term branding. Imagine walking into a room in a year's time and someone giving you a $10,000 check and you never have to sell them. It's just like, Hey, I saw you. I've, I've been watching you. I want to give you, like, I want to start with you. That's amazing. That's what happens when you put the time in now. It will pay off in six months, in a year, in five years. And then thank you so much for being on the show, JJ. And where can the audience find you again? Can you tell us website, social media handles again? Yeah. So if you want to go check me out on Instagram at JJ Live, J A Y J A Y L I V E, or Ace of Spades Agency.com. And then send me a DM and say you saw me on the podcast and I'll know it's you. Absolutely. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much again, JJ. It was amazing having you here and those tips were amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us this week on Holistic Wealth with Keisha Blair. Make sure to visit our website, KeishaBlair.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, or via RSS so you will never miss a show. While you're at it, If you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. Are you a member of the Institute on Holistic Wealth? If not, what are you waiting for? Go to Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to choose your membership plan and join. As a member, you get so many perks. Free worksheets, advice, coaching, and a member's workshop to design an intentionally designed life. You need to figure out your life purpose? Take the Build Your Life Purpose Portfolio online self-paced course. You're struggling with all your money decisions? Take the free financial identities quiz and then take the course. You recently had a breakup, job loss, or experienced the death of a loved one? Take the holistic healing course. You need an overall plan to achieve holistic wealth? We will help you figure out your holistic wealth blueprint. And of course, if you want to start making money by helping others achieve holistic wealth, become a certified holistic wealth consultant. Regardless of what career you've got, the Institute will show you how to increase your income and walk in your purpose. The sooner you join, the sooner you start to achieve a more holistically wealthy lifestyle. And you're going to want to stay for a very long time. So go to Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. If you haven't read the book yet, pick up a copy of the award-winning, best-selling Holistic Wealth 32 Life Lessons to Help You Find Purpose, Prosperity, and Happiness.